Okay, so let's look at Softer Tan by Sherwin-Williams with undertones of wheat and a tinge of green. Green wheat, that's a new one. So hopefully if you've clicked on this video, you're interested in this color or you're just a big fan of those warmer leaning neutrals like this. So what I'm going to do is I'll just teach you how to use it really well in your home the best way that I can. And that's through incorporating some other Sherwin-Williams colors that I've picked just for you and you and you and you and whoever else is watching. Welcome to Color Quickie on the Paint People where we just break down a color, get some color pairings for it and also some trim color options because those baseboards need to be painted too. I don't care how white they look, okay? Give them a coat or two. So clearly at long last, the design world is finally starting to embrace warm colors and brighter colors. A little more saturation is coming back in our lives. Beige is back in a big way for better or worse, and gray sucks, apparently. But speaking of warmer colors and warmer neutrals specifically, it's not only beige, but light browns, and for the sake of this video, tan colors are also kind of a big deal these days. So softer tan SW6141 is a color that I wanted to really hone in on. It's a beautiful neutral that's technically part of the yellow family of colors. Although it won't really seem very yellowy when you first look at it, I think the main aspect of its yellowness is just where the warmth is coming from ultimately. Neutrals can also be warmed up with orange and even red in some cases, but yellow based warmth is a little more common in the neutral space within these tan colors especially. Softer tan is also part of the Sherwin-Williams top 50 color collection, which I think is kind of good to know. It gets the stamp of approval to be the 50 best colors apparently. What I love to do on Color Quickie is get into some technical stuff. Some of the more specific information regarding this color on a more scientific level. And it's actually pretty relevant here in this case. So first things first, we have LRV, light reflectance value. This is a mega important number to know about. If you're new to the channel, welcome. LRV is essentially a zero to 100 percentage of light the amount of light that a color reflects. The higher that number, the more light or white it'll appear, or bright at least. The lower that number is, the darker it'll appear. And this color has a 60 LRV, which is actually pretty awesome because not only is it above average technically, it's really in a nice sweet spot for wall colors. Anything that's around 60 to 65, designers tend to agree, that's an awesome place to be. It's not going to feel too pale, and just lifeless, but it's also not overly rich where it could make your space feel overly dark and dingy. Now your mileage will of course vary. So if your lighting isn't ideal, it could react differently in your space, but just as a general rule of thumb, that's a pretty solid starting point, I would say. We also mentioned that yellow warmth earlier, and that's what I feel causes this color's undertone. There is this slight green touch in the color, and that's because yellow can sometimes do that, especially when combined with, you know, shades of brown or more specifically grays and blacks that are sort of mixed in. Those things all coming together can create that little green tinge, which may spook ya. <laughs> but all it does really in practical use is it just prevents this tan from feeling overly pinky or red leaning and instead just gives you a soft gold touch that meshes really well with natural materials that might be in your home. Where are my jute friends at? Good old jute rugs, dude. Now, if I'm still not convincing you, if you're like, no, 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 green undertones, Ugh, that sounds awful. Then you should especially test this color out before going full tilt with it, before you give your painter the green light, see what I did there, to paint your whole house with it. Make sure you test your colors. I do think that this is main color worthy for me, which means this is a color that you can paint your house with, like the interior of your home, if you wanted to use it in the main parts of your home, or even all over, you could do it, I could see it, but I think a better implementation of this color would be to incorporate some other colors through color pairings. So of course we have three other wall color options and two trim options, both a light and a dark. So let's get to those right before I tell you about today's sponsor, which is the paint people. It's us. We have opened up channel membership, which is essentially just another way you can further support our channel. We do this full time. This is my job, making these videos six times a week. And all it is is the price of a really cheap cup of coffee. So if you love what we do on this channel, that's another way you can show us. And I really appreciate it if you do that. In addition to, you know, liking the video, watching the video, subscribing if you haven't already, sharing it with your friends. All right. So Cork Wedge is the first color pairing I wanna get to. It's a 42 LRV warmer neutral. And I just describe it as a simple deepening of softer tan. 
Not exactly, but they are within the same family for sure. There's still a touch of that green kind of hiding in the background, but it'll definitely feel closer to a traditional tan color, mainly because of its saturation. It has a lot more depth. It's a lot darker of a color. So I think it'd be great as just a darker variation for a different room. Or if you wanted a very subtle accent wall color next to softer tan, it'll be noticeable, but not a huge jarring jump. So that could be a nice way to use it in let's say a bedroom or a family room. You can put it behind the TV or your fireplace mantle. Those are some ideas there. I would say this is the easiest and simplest color pairing to incorporate. The next one is Koi Pond. And this almost feels like the opposite of that last color where it has a lot of green and then maybe a touch of tan to soften it slightly. Sort of a reciprocal yin yang kind of relationship. It still fits neatly next to the other two colors. All three of them together are very earthy and organic feeling. And Koi Pond is just about as dark as Cork Wedge as well. So you can use them under similar lighting conditions pretty easily, kind of a 1A, 1B variation. But Koi Pond will just be a little more of an accent because it's a different color. It's more of a green. Now the real accent color here is Enigma and it's a dusty shade of purple, pretty complementary to the other colors, but also not overly vibrant either. So it won't pop out in a crazy obnoxious manner. It's not gonna seem like you just dumped a bunch of grape soda all over your walls. I find it to be an excellent bedroom color. I could see it working really well in an office setting or even a dining room. And just keep in mind that it is darker. It's definitely the darkest color today. LRV is around 21. So it's really in that bottom fifth darkness wise. So maybe don't put it in a room that you want to feel light and airy and buoyant and vibrant. It will feel a little more prestigious and grounded and stable and sturdy and all those other adjectives. We got to talk about baseboard colors. So not only that, but also your doors and your door frames and your window frames and your casings, all your trim needs to be painted as well. So typically for the majority of people, the standard is kind of going with an off white. So that's what my first color is. It's called Snowbound. And this is a former color of the month, which is a thing apparently. But why I picked it for this video is it's a very clean white with a touch of gray to just chill it out a little bit. Chill like snow. It's also super popular. Like a lot of people do use it. And I often pair it with warmer neutrals, even though it doesn't really feel all that warm in and of itself. But because of that, it gives you a nice little contrast of color temperature where it's crisp and stark. It'll really pop off in a beautiful way without feeling overly cold or blue leaning like some colors can feel. Now, if you wanted a darker trim option for dramatic baseboards or just darker interior doors, Pewter Tankard would be my suggestion for you, which is one of Sherwin-Williams historic colors. It's one of their old school choices. And really it's just a classic grounded taupe color that combines earthy gray and brown very subtly. And not only does it look good on trim inside, but it can double as another darker wall color as well for something even more rich and prestigious. You can even use this color as an exterior choice on the main body of your home. I think it's a great option. Now, don't you wanna see all these colors together? Well, of course, here you go. This is the color palette, nice. And I know you've been binging some Paint People content, so I'll make it easy for you. Just click this one next. 